A new Long March 12 is readying for maiden flight. Isa is exploring crewed flight. Starship number 30 retired and ready for testing. NASA rover accidentally finds pure sulfur. Blue Origin New Glen is no longer legless. Deep Blue Rocket progresses. ABL Rocket Misfortune. Launches of the week. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space and this is your weekly space update. Something I have not much mentioned about over the past month is the new rocket and its infrastructure for CASC and its Long March 12. Now, what is the Long March 12 and where does it fit in this large number of Long Marches managed by CASC? Well, the Long March 12 is a medium launcher capable of carrying payloads of about 10 metric tons on low Earth orbit and at least 6 metric tons in a 700 km sun-synchronous orbit. It is of similar capability as the Ariane 6 with two side boosters, the LMV3 from ISRO or the ULA Vulcan Centaur without side boosters and is positioned right between the Long March 3C and the Long March 3BE. So that should give you uh, a good idea of what this Long March rocket compares to. Of course, it is academic since most payloads are Chinese made, so not much competition with other nations yet. A brand new launch platform was created at the Wenchang Space Launch Site in Wenchang on the islands of Hainan in China, the home also of all Long March 5, 7 and 8 launches. Now here are some of the efforts to erect such a launch platform and all the related tests required for commissioning it. We do not often see much from CASC, but judging from SpaceX or NASA SLS effort spent, something we have lots of media coverage on, one can imagine that there is a colossal effort behind making a new launch platform. And besides, this launch platform is identified as a universal launch platform capable of launching 19 different rocket types to accommodate the rapidly growing commercial and private launch providers. The rocket is 59 meter tall or 194 feet, 3.8 meter or 12 feet in diameter, weighs a mere 433 metric tons or just under 1 million pounds and comes in two stages and two fairing diameters in 4.2 meters and in 5.2 meters. Now, both stages run in kerosene RP1 and liquid oxygen, like many of the new rockets, which is far more friendly than its predecessors Long March 2, 3, 4 and as well Long March 5, first stage only which used the noxious propellant nitrogen tetroxide, hoping that Long March 12 would replace at least the Long March 3s from an environmental standpoint. Its first stage engine is a derivative of those used on Long March 5 side boosters only, as well as the Long March 6, 7 and 8. And the second stage engine is the same as for Long March 6, 7 and 8. The maiden flight of the Long March 12 is expected on August 28th this year and the Long March 12 will become the first Chinese rocket with a diameter of 3.8 meter as most Chinese rockets have a diameter of 3.35 meters. So let us wait and see for such a flight to take place. ESA just awarded INS Pass a contract to assess the Ariane 6 launch system's suitability for crew transportation. ESA Director of Space Transportation, Tony Tolk Nielsen, explained that Ariane 6 could either be modified to comply with necessary safety standards to launch crewed flights, or the agency could invest in a safety system for the capsule to make it safe for the crew in case of launch failure. Tolker Nielsen went on to explain that the agency already had a contract out in October 23 
to find the best trade-off between these two options early next year. Furthermore, Tony emphasized that such a crude version may or may not be using an Ion 6 and leaves the industry to provide proposals. At Starbase, the launch site is buzzing with activities. The second Mechazilla Tower has had its third section added to it. You could even see the pre-installed pipes, saving the SpaceX team valuable working time at heights. At the production site, Starship number 30, the one to fly on integrated flight test number 5, has had most of its thermal protection tiles changed to the point that SpaceX employees are now removing the scaffolding surrounding it. Now that is the good news. We also saw new Raptor vacuum engines being delivered to be installed on Starship number 31. At Massey site, the demonstrator B14.1 previously used to test the Mechazilla arm catching mechanism is now back at Massey's and installed onto a test rig. Such rigs are usually used for compression tests. Staying at Massey, the Starship number 30 has now been put on a stand and on his way to Massey site for his series of tests such as cryogenic and static fire tests. NASA scientists were stunned by Curiosity Mars rover latest discovery. It drove over a rock, which it does on a regular basis, but this time cracked one open to reveal something never seen before on the red planet, yellow sulfur crystals. Sulfate, a kind of salt that contains sulfur and forms as water evaporates, is seen in abundance on the red planet, but never made of pure sulfur. It isn't clear what relationship, if any, the pure sulfur has to other sulfur-based minerals in this area. It forms in only a narrow range of conditions that scientists haven't associated with the history of this location, and Curiosity found a lot of it. An entire field of bright rocks that looks similar to the one the rover crushed. Blue Origin recently completed his New Glenn's first stage test of his six landing legs, a key part for rocket reusability, which lowers the cost of access to space. Landing gear stored inside the rocket during flight, deploying as the booster gently touches down on the Blue Origin vessel at sea. It also seems to be a flyable hardware, so will we see it on the maiden flight? Another Chinese rocket company called Deep Blue was created in November 2016, has completed a series of static fires of their Nebula 1 prototype with three Thunder R1 kerosene liquid oxygen engines along with grid fins tests for reusability purposes, very much like that of Falcon 9. Deep Blue has also tested its legs deployment and drop tests of Nebula 1 Again, for testing the reusability properties from start, it will soon be transported to the launch site for a 5 to 10 km vertical takeoff and vertical landing test flight. In October 2021, the company completed a 100 meter, and in May 2022, they reached 1 km altitude for the vertical takeoff and vertical landing tests. I will obviously cover this flight test when it occurs. You may remember ABL, a seven-year-old Californian-based rocket manufacturer of his RS-1, a one-ton class launcher aiming to test their rocket from Kodiak in Alaska, and next, temporarily, from Space Launch Complex 46 in Cape Canaveral to finally settled in Space Launch Complex 15 in Cape Canaveral. ABL was selected by Amazon to launch is Cooper Satellite Constellation. The first attempt in January 2023 resulted in a failure where the aft end caught fire, which burned through a set of electrical wires, which got power and shut off the engines. The rocket crashed back down onto the pad, which took a considerable amount of time to repair. Many alterations later, ABL was working towards another flight test July 31st after a pre-flight static fire test on Friday, a residual pad fire caused 
irrecoverable damage to RS1. ABL is investigating the root cause and will provide updates as the investigation progresses. So Q3 launch is off the menu for now. The week in rocket launch was rather slim, with just one launch on Friday, July 19th, 2024, with a successful launch from CASC of his Long March 4B from China for his mission Gaofen 1105. In summary, from January 1st until July 25th, 2024, a total of 133 rockets were successfully launched. Out of that, 31 were from Chinese companies or institutions. I leave you with this simple yet amazing picture of this massive galaxy cluster ABO 2390, combining the pictures from Euclid and XMM Newton's X-ray Observatory satellites, showing the blazing hot gas that fills the space between the galaxies right in the middle of this picture. The temperature of the gas is expected to range between 10 to 100 million degrees Celsius, according to scientists. ABLE 2390 is located 2.7 billion light years away from Earth, not the furthest away galaxy recorded by any telescope by any means. This was your weekly space update. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space. Goodbye and see you next week.